Well, it, it's all the same this time of year. You only just caught me. I thought I'd have an early night tonight. Ah, get away with you. It's not eight o'clock. Oh, yes, I know. But I like to have a little bit of a read before I drop off. And I'm in the middle of a very interesting story. Oh, well, is Kenneth not in? No, he's just popped out. <laughs> When's he going to hear about this job that he's been after? Oh, not for a couple of weeks yet. How's Valerie taking it? Oh, not, not very well, I'm afraid. She, she hasn't said much, mind you, but I think she's a little bit more fond of him than what she lets on. And he'll all, he'll all finish up all right in the end. Well, it usually does. Aye. Even when you get to our age. <laughs> I, I was just thinking that just as you walked in. Only in my case, it's taken close on four years. Hey, hey well, what might this be? It's an old folks' bungalow. Mm -hmm. Four years since I put my name down, and I've just had a letter from the council asking me to go around. Mm. Oh, evening, Albert. Oh, hello, thank you. What are you not back yet? No, not yet. I was just telling Albert about that letter from the council. Oh, aye, aye. Well, you can go down there tomorrow and tell him you don't want it. Sir. What time is it, Albert? Oh, Lord, it's uh, five minutes to eight, I'll make it. Five to eight? Mm. Oh, she should have been here by now. Hey, well, she's gone to see our VD, hasn't she? Ah, I know, but she's been here long ago. Now, look, our VD's had an operation. <laughs> when two women get gassed about operation, it's amazing how the time flies. Uh -huh. Oh, and talking about time, if you're going to have an early night, I'd better be going. Look, Frank, will you give these to your kennel? There's some coloured yes. pencils here, haven't uh. And it's all right. I know my way out. Ta-da, Albert. Ta-da, Albert. Ta-da, Albert. Well, I'm just off to make myself a drink before I talk. Would you like one? Eh? Hey. Oh, uh, no, thanks, Mother. Well, stop nattering. I'll put a nice full kettle on, then she can have a cup of tea when she comes home. Okay. But I, oh, okay. Gran. I don't suppose you'd say no to a drink. No, I don't suppose I would. Coffee, is it? Yeah, it took me fine, Gran. Well, you stop here and cheer your dad up while I go and make it. Oh? <laughs> What do you want cheering up for? Well, yeah, your mother hasn't come home yet, Ken. Where's she gone? Oh, well, she's gone to see Albert Tatlock. Last, you know, she's uh, had an operation. Well, it's only eight o'clock. Well, I didn't send anything to your gran, you know, but she said she'd be back at be seven at the latest. Oh, honestly, Daddy, I'm no worrier, aren't you? I know, but it's not like your mother. It's you know. not like my mum to leave someone who might want cheering up. Ah, it's all very well, you know, but... But nothing. Now, look, Dad, I know exactly what you're thinking, but when Mum comes home, for heaven's sake, don't tell her. If you do, she's going to be worried to death about being a few minutes late from uh, now on. Oh, well, I suppose you're right. Of course I'm right. Now cheer up, and that's an order. <laughs> Who's that? It's somebody at the door. I'll go and see her with it's you. It's all right. I'll, I'll go, Ken. Come in, dear. Come in. I did ask me to leave a quart of tea on her way to work and I forgot about it. I hope you haven't done with that. Oh, I don't think so, thank you, Mr. Lindley. Gran's making a drink now. I thought I'd better let you have it. I don't want to be found wanting, and a promise is a promise. Mm. Is Ida in? No, she's not. Oh, well, she can settle up when I see her again. She's gone to see Mr. Tatlock's daughter. My dad's worrying himself sick because she's a few minutes late. Well, she's not a few minutes late. She's an hour late. Oh, you don't want to worry, Mr. Barlow. Mm. She'll come rolling in as large as life. You see if she doesn't. Mm. Well, you can say what you like, but it's not like her either. What's happening about that bloke? Uh, Johnson's with him. He's bringing him back here as soon as they finish with him. Right. Oh. You might be out. Hello, Mrs. McIntyre. What do we all on this visit, eh? Lost property. Oh, what have we lost this time? What do you mean, this time? You've never known me lose out. Well, not to ask your help, anyhow. Uh, your gym, then, is it? We'd lose his head if we were loose. No, it's not him, though. It's a customer. Well, it's a good job all our customers aren't like her. How do you mean? She hadn't any money. Oh, hard luck, Casey. Oh, no, oh, nothing like that. No, she was a decent enough person, all right. No, she come in for a cup of tea just on closing time. Waiting for a bus, I reckon. Anyhow, when the point came to the point, she found she left the purse at home. So she left it for security, eh? What? Security for a cup of tea? Hey, don't be daft. How many free cups of tea have you had from me? She didn't want to drink it, though. You could see how embarrassed she was. I mean, a little thing like that. I reckon that's what made her forget the bag. That and worrying about her purse and all. She couldn't remember whether she'd left it at home or were. She said she always kept forms for a fare to work in the pocket, so she hadn't noticed till then. So you want to leave it here, eh? Well, she might not remember where she'd been during such a tizzy. There's no address inside, I suppose. Well, not having looped in, I could hardly say, could I? Ah, well, you'll leave it with us, Mrs. Mike. Right, oh, then, thanks. I'll be off, then. Here, yeah, hang on a minute. I've got to give you a receipt for this lot. Well, I don't want one. I'm sorry, it's regulations. Hey, you and your regulations. About time you have this place decorated, isn't it? Hey, <laughs> don't make me laugh. Here, I'll look. Here's your receipt. Hey, you and your bits of paper. <laughs> In yet? Uh, no, Gran. What's the time? I can't see without my glasses. Nine o'clock. Well, it is getting a bit late, isn't it? Oh, my dad won't admit it, but she's been as late as this before. 
Somebody at the door. I don't want them to catch me like this. I'll go upstairs. You let me know when she comes back, won't you? I'll tell her to come up and see her. How's that? Yes, but you know what to get in there. Hello, Esther. Hello, Ken. Come in. Oh, thank you. Um, well, it, it, uh, it's really your father that I want to see. It's not home, I suppose. Uh, no, but we'll be back in a minute. Oh, well, it's nothing really. It's just one of the fuses at school. It's, well, it's not much of a job, but I don't like playing about with electricity. No, of course not. Um, I suppose you couldn't, uh... uh well, I could, but as a matter of fact, I don't want to go out until my dad gets back. You see, Mum hasn't come home and is in a right fidget. I'm beginning to get a bit worried myself. Well, what do you mean, Ken? Well, she said she'd be home at seven. It's now nine o'clock and we haven't heard a word. Oh, I'm sure she'll be all right. She just got stuck somewhere. Yes, she's gone to see Mr. Tatlock's daughter. Oh, well, that explains it. Pete, will keep her talking till all hours, you know. Here, has she come yet? Uh, no, Dad. Well, look, I rang up the Imperial to say that she left at the usual time. Tell you, I, I'm not satisfied. Something's happened to oh, her. Oh, well, Frank, you shouldn't worry. But I am worried. I am very worried, Esther. It's not like her. Now, though. look, Dad, if anything ever happened, we would have heard. You know she has that identity disc in her purse. I, well, I suppose that's true enough. Look, Dad, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take a bus down to Beatty Tatlock, if that'll make you feel any better. Aye, all right, lad. I was going to do the same thing myself. No, it's better if you stop here. Ten to one will pass on the way. And, uh... While I'm gone, you can go and mend Esther's fuse for her. Oh. Uh, look, uh, you'll come back straight away if she's not there, won't well, she's you? not there. She'll be here when I get back. But, all right, I'll come straight back. And cheer up. Remember, no news is good news. All right, OK. Mind your back. What are you? Mind, mind, mind your back. See them behind the counter order, mind, mind their backs. There's more staff than customers tonight, isn't there? All part of the service, Len. All part of the service. We'll have to do some supping tonight to keep this lot busy, you know. Ah, uh, that's not likely to worry you, Len, Fairclough. Hey, did you hear that? Don't say things like that. Love, you'll be giving me a reputation. Ah, uh, <laughs> but think what a grand time you'll have living up to it, eh, Len? Uh, Oh, well, I'll have the same again for you, Jack. that in sleep, he does, you know. Oh, that's on with you. Is Dennis Tanner still on that telephone? Yeah, I think so, Mr. Wolf. You know, he's been a bloody nuisance for that telephone, as you'll get this lately. If he goes on at this rate, he'll be whacking the doors up in two o'clock in the morning. After well, I don't it. understand it. I'm sure anyone would think it was the Prime Minister. Well, it's his agency. <laughs> this big agent saw him at the Orinoco and asked him to phone you, see? Oh, and he's been telephoning ever since, as far as I can make out. Well, he did tell me he hadn't been able to get hold of him. <sighs> I've spoken to him. Oh, no, isn't that nice? Hey, big stuff, eh, Dennis? Oh, I'll say. He wants to see me at his place in half an hour. <coughs> his place? What's he got, then? A semi-detached dustbin? Oh, don't be daft. He's a big man, he's Dennis. The lips are biggest. Yeah. Just think. I shall walk out of that door, plain Dennis Tanner, and I shall walk back in again. Well, who knows? Ah, it's a solemn thought, lad. Hey, don't know I'm standing here for. I've only got half an hour. Yeah, your tie's not straight. Hey, look, if it's that important, you can't go without a drink. Pull him a pint, Jack, before oh, you... No, oh, no, I haven't got... Oh, go on, it's all right. I'll pay it, all right. No, I'd rather not. Thank Get you. away, a double whiskey will do you the world of good. Oh, well, in that case, happen, I will. Thanks very much. <laughs> Dad, is it? Mr. Tatlock? No, no, it's not oh, better. I just thought for a minute. It's not often we have anybody calling from Coronation Street. Except your mother, of course. Well, that's what I've come about, is it, Anne? Oh, well, do come in. Oh, thanks. I, I mustn't stop, though. I've just popped over to see if my mum was here. Why, well, no, I'm afraid she isn't. Oh, she's been there? No. Did she say she was coming? Well, yes. Yes, she did. Well, I've been in all the time. But the doctor won't let me go out yet, you see, so I would have heard her. Well, I suppose you mean she hasn't come home yet? Yes, sir, uh, something like that. Dear. Oh, well, I'm sure there's a perfectly simple explanation. She's such a quiet, sensible sort of person. I expect you'll find her waiting for you when you get back. Yes, I'm sure I shall. Well, anyway, I'd better try and catch the next bus. I promise, Dad. Oh, yes, of course. Oh, what a pity you can't stay. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, thanks. I heard you'd finished at the university. Yes. Oh, you must come over and see us sometime. Yes, well, I'm sure thanks. my husband will be most interested. Oh, thanks. Now, you give, give our love to Dad, won't you? Uh, Mr. Tatlock, I mean. Yes, I will. I will. <laughs> And everything's all right. Is it all right to smoke in here? Ah, go ahead. Um, have one. No, thanks. I'm a pipe man myself. Can't keep my hands still. It'll wear off after a bit. I dare say it's now to you. I mean, you'll be used to it. Yeah, I don't suppose anyone ever gets used to it. It's happened a bit different for us. I'll grant you, we see that much of it like. I know that corner like I know my own backyard. It's always been a bad corner. How about another cup of tea? No, I couldn't. It'd steady you down. Yo, I doubt if I could hold the cup, let alone drink it. Thanks all the same. I spilled most of the last lot. 
Perhaps you'd like to uh, read through this statement, Mr. Foster, and sign it if it's all right. Here, this is the scarf you brought in, isn't it, Mr. Foster? Your mate brought it in. It slipped off when that chap put his coat under her head. I just wanted to be sure you remembered. Yeah, well, I'm not likely to forget anything connected with this one. Well, it might be very useful. We're having a bit of trouble with identification, you see. You've heard nothing else, I suppose. No, I'm afraid we haven't. Johnson's up there now, though. Well, shall I have to be here long? No, I shouldn't think so. Oh, worried about your family, are you? We can do something about that, you know. No, they don't expect me back till late. I haven't got you both started. Well, I'd be very obliged if you could wait till Johnson gets back. It'll save time later on, all right. I suppose I'm as well here as anywhere. Well, we won't keep you longer than we need. Uh, one grey silk head scarf with horse's head decoration. Well, you can't say that's much help for identification. I know what it's like. I remember a long time ago, my mother went to the Better Homes exhibition and she missed the tram back. And oh, I did worry. I should think you did. You shouldn't have let her go in the first place. Ah, you can't compare your mother with Ida Barlow. And yet, it's like she must be at least 60 years younger to the start. Excuse me, somebody's asking for Dennis Tanner. Is anyone here seeing you? When you've been here a bit longer, you realize we never see any men in this snug. She'll learn. It might take her about 20 years, but she'll learn. He's doing very well. Who is? Dennis Tanner. His mother was telling me. It's no good, Ethan. You're not built for that. You're just not. Not your line at all. No, I, I, I know it isn't. It was just... Uh, I know, well, I know. You know. Yeah. Sinus. Had it for years. Uh, I can't say I've ever had it myself. You don't want it, kid. You don't want it. Terrible. The suffering. You've no idea. It's uh, very good of you to see me. I didn't quite catch that. Uh, it affects the ear in a bit, you know. Oh, I said it's very good of you to see me. Oh, what's good for you is good for me. You might say that's been my motto all my life. Make a note of that, Sonny. Eh? Yeah. Uh, do you mind if I smoke? No, oh, pass me one along. Yeah. Terrible for the sinus. What can you do? It's, uh... <coughs> Thanks, I needed that. Now, uh, how long have you been in this lousy business? Oh, uh, not for long, you know, J just a few months, like. It hasn't broke your heart, then, yet, eh? Oh, no, I like no. it. How long have you been in that dump? What dump, Mr. Phillips? Oh, that club you're working in. Oh, I wouldn't call that a dump, Mr. Oh, Phillips. Oh, well, I would. Honest to God. I never heard. Hang on a minute, will you? Hello. Oh, hello, Madeline. How are you, love? Oh, hard luck, dearie. That is hard luck, I... Look, yeah, where do you say you're stranded? Skegness, eh? Look, look, I did warn you. Can't say I didn't warn you. Now listen, Uncle Lenny. I've got the very spot waiting for you right here. Yeah, a club called the Orinoco. It's a lovely place, lovely. You'll bless me for it. Oh, you naughty girl. Look, I've not always told you. Whatever happened, hang on to your fur. I've always told you that, haven't I? Yeah, well, the best thing you better do is find a nice, uh, kind lorry drive, you know, and... Yeah, I know, love, I know. Uh, look, I'm in the middle of a very important interview now. I've, I've got to go, love, yeah. Yeah, all right, well, look, have a pleasant journey. See you in the morning. Right? Okay. What can you do, eh? What can you do? Well, that's show business for you. Now, uh, what was you on about? The Orinoco, Mr. Phillips. Oh, well, that's all right for these young strippers, you know, but for a bright young lad like yourself, you can do better than that. Oh, it's nice of you to say so. Oh, I mean it, lad, I mean it. I didn't intend to stop there all my life, no. Sure, sure you did. Uh. As soon as I saw you, I said to myself, that chap won't stay there for long. So I suppose you'll hang on till something else comes along, eh? Oh, yeah. Well, you see, it's very handy living at home and all that. You see, you've got your head screwed up in the right way, eh? <laughs> I'm, uh, glad you like me act. Act? Yeah, you know. Dun, dun, oh, I, uh, I know. Uh, look, uh, take it from me, son. You haven't got it. 
mean twenty thousand others out, but you haven't got it, take it from me. Well, you like me jokes then, I mean you fancy me as a comedian. But soon fancy myself. Well, if you feel like that about it, I don't see why you brought me here in the first place. Oh, there you go, son. You're a bright young lad. I spot that as soon as I saw you. I said he's a lad with the future, he wants to get on, he wants to make money. And the way to make money in this business is on my side of the fence. And what I'm looking for is a nice, bright young lad like yourself to lend me a few good acts, you see. Now, you're a nicely placed in that club of yours, you know, and who knows what it might lead to. Place in the business. Who knows? What do you say? Oh, sounds all right. I'll have to think it over, mind. Well, it'll be a nice little cut in here for you, everyone handle, you know, and think of the prestige, eh? Can you hear him? Oh, Mr. Tanner's in the audience tonight, Josie. I'm dead scared, you know. Power, son, that's what counts. Power. Hang on a minute, will you? Benny Phillips, Regan. I've got another thanks. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, hello, Diana. Ah. Oh, I'd love to hear the eye. And, hey, what have they been doing at you now, love? Thanks, I need a glass. Nobody at home. All on your own, are you? No, I did not know. How do you mean, Frank? She's missing. Go on. Well, she should have been here ages ago. Ken gone to look for her. I'm sorry about this. Hey, don't to worry about that. We've had it happen to us a couple of times. You're <laughs> getting her eight sweat of a note. Aye, I know. That's what I keep telling myself. Well, there's nobody seen her. Oh, not since she left for the Imperial this morning. Well, have you not asked down at the Rovers? She might have said something to somebody. Uh, she might have told someone where she was going. Well, we know where she's supposed to be going. Well, you never know. I know, look, it's a funny thing, but I, I found a, a purse on the sideboard about half an hour ago. I suppose she must have forgotten it when she went out, but she wouldn't notice it, of course, because she always carries a few coppers in the pocket. Well, there you are. Ah, well, it might be that, but all I can say is it's taken a blooming long time if it is. Well, I'll tell you what, I came round to see if you wanted to go for a drink to the Rovers. I'll slip round there now and see if anybody's here, though. I'll only be out for tea. Hello, there. Uh, well, Kenny, what was she there? No, she hadn't been either. Look, I found your mother's purse on the sideboard uh, just after you'd gone out. That may account for us not having heard out. Oh, perhaps she's got stuck somewhere then. Aye, that's what Alf Roberts well, says. Well, you know what she'd like without money. Aye. Look, come on, lad. Where are we going? We're going round to the Rovers to ring the police up. We've waited long enough. Come on, Kenny. Jack? Hello, Jack. Hello, Jack. Hello, Jack. Hello, Jack. Hello, Jack. Hello, Hey, just a minute, I'll ask him. Hey, just a minute, everybody. Has anybody seen Ida Barlow since, uh, since when out? Yeah, I don't know, since, since she left work this morning. Since this morning, well, eh? Hey? She's missing from home. She's what? Well, right. right. yeah. oh, She'll be coming. She's missing from home. Hey, yeah, well, here's Frank Barlow now with young Kenneth. Well, I'm only Do you mind if I use your phone? No, yeah. not at all, lad, not at all. Come straight. Oh, here we are. Oh, dear. Dear, I do hope nothing's happened. I'm sure it'll be all right. She probably just went out somewhere and forgot to tell anyone. I don't all. think Ida Barlow would do a thing like that, look. Me neither. Oh, I suppose they're ringing the police now. Ah, that's what they'll be doing, right enough. Oh, I'm sure it'll be all right. The regional headquarters. That'll be best. I'll get it for you. Central Double Four Three. There you are. It's ringing oh, now. Thank you. Hello, uh... Oh, hello. Uh, I want to report that my wife's missing. Yeah, well, she's not come home from work, you see. And... All right. Aye, all right. They're putting me on to somebody, that. Duty Sergeant. Yes, sir. Missing? I see, sir. Would you, um... Would you just give me your name, please? Mr. Frank? Frank Barlow. And the address, please. Number three, Coronation Street. Yes, yes, I know the area. Down by Rossum Street, isn't it? That's right. Now, oh, sir, could you tell me what your wife was wearing? Uh, Ken, what was your mother wearing? Uh, I got a chance to remember. Here, you talk to him, lad. I feel a bit peculiar. Uh, <sighs> hello. I'm speaking for my father. You want to know what my mother was wearing? Yes. Well, she was wearing a, a grey woolen suit and a white blouse. Yes, I'm quite certain. I saw her just before she went out. No, I can't think of anything unusual. She had a shopping bag with her. Well, she used to carry a knitting in it and sometimes an overall. Yes, as a matter of fact, she was. She was Knitting a pair of red and white football socks on her brother. No, I 
can't think of anything else. Oh, yes, she did have a grey silk headscarf with horses' heads on it. Uh, hang on a minute, sir. Arthur, read me out that telex from Tower Street, the one about the accident. And just the clothes? Yes. Grey woolen suit, white blouse, black shoes, grey silk headscarf with horses' heads on it. No mention of the shopping bag? No, sir. Mm. Sorry about that, sir. No, 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 we shan't require any more details. Tell your father we'll be sending the constable down right away. Right you are, sir. Goodbye. Hmm, all the mystery cleared up by the look of it. I'll just have another look at that telex and then I'd better go into Tile Street. Here you are. Drink this, Mr. Paulo. It'll do you no harm. Oh, thanks. They're sending a constable around. D did they say out else, lad? No. Ah, oh, well, you know what they say. No news is good news. Hey, why not stop here until he comes? You're better among company at a time like this, you know. I suppose I'd be as well here as anywhere. That's right. Well, I'll fix up for somebody to go around to your place and wait for him coming. In the meantime, take your dad into the living room, will you, Ken? Tile Street. Oh, it's you, Johnson. Just leaving, eh? Oh. Oh, I see. Yes, well, I think that's what we expected. Yeah, he's still here. I'll get back as quick as you can. No, right, Yarlan. Is she? I'm afraid she is, Mr. Foster. Tower Street. That telex she sent out at 19.30. That's it, the accident. Now, is there anything further to add to that description? No? Well, um, shopping bag, for example. No, no, there was no shopping bag. Here, wait a minute. I've got a grey shopping bag here containing a pair of partly knitted red and white socks, an overall and a packet of soap. No, no, it was handed in his lost property, found near the place where the accident was. Ah, it looks as though that's it then. Right, yeah, bye. Funny. I never thought to connect them two. Uh, well, it's just routine, you see. They won't take a full description over the phone, just a few details. Yeah, I'm sure that's what it is. Well, I don't know. I don't feel too happy about it myself. You've only to look at poor Frank Barlow's face. People have an instinct about this sort of thing, you know. Well, I'll hope you're wrong, Annie. It's oh, to think of anything happening to either Barlow. Oh, there's a police car outside the Barlow's. Oh, he's not here. He's at the Rovers down the street. I said I'd hang on here and take you to him. Oh, well, let's get it over with, then. Get it over with? Have you found her then? Oh yes, so we found her. What's happened? Knocked down, Grey Street. It's not serious, is it? I'm afraid it is, sir. She's been killed. Shall we go? I need to drop round with us, sir. I'm not stopping. I was just going to say how glad I was to see somebody. Why, I'm here then. No, they've gone to see about some death certificates. Oh. Oh, well, I will stop for a minute. How are you coping? Oh, I'm all right. It's Ken and Mr. Barlow. Oh, you don't have to tell me. I buried my mother, you know, eight months ago to the day almost. I've had enough of funerals to last me a lifetime. You just have to get through it, love. That's about all you can do. What do you want, miss? I'll put it over here next to this other till they've seen it. The front room's just about full. 
That makes mine look a bit off, doesn't it? It's from the Imperial, where she works, you know. It only came a few minutes ago. It's at half past twelve, isn't it? Yes, at the new crematorium. Oh, look, I shan't be there. I mean, it's not that I don't think the world of Ida, because I did, but... Oh, well, anyway, if there's anything like I was, they won't know who's there and who isn't. It's a mercy they've been kept busy, what with the inquest and one thing and another. The certificates for this and certificates for that. Cars for the funeral and how many for dinner after. Where are they having it? Fiddlers on Rosman Street. Mm. Boiled ham and pickled onions. I don't think I'll ever face boiled ham again as long as I live. Everybody's sitting there, stuffing it down and gassing both at the same time. All them relatives you never see from one Preston Gill to another. I can remember my Aunt Ada sitting opposite, round with my cousin Joan, because she said me had to put on weight since my granddad's funeral. Could have screamed. I wanted to shout my mum's dead, what's it matter? I don't think I'd go through another like that. Would you like a cup of tea? No, love, that's right. I had one just before I come over. Has David come over yet? No, they were going to call at the station to meet one of the trains. He thought the world of his mother, you know. They all did. Yeah, I know. Rough old life, isn't it? Oh, it sounds as if they're back. Well, look, do you mind if I slip out the back? No, of course not. You know the way. Hey, don't forget. Shout me if you need anything. Thanks. Thanks. David not come. When did these come? Um, while you were gone. The big one's from the Imperial and the other's from Christine Arden. I'll take them in the front row. Letting myself some gloves. It's our David. Dad. I thought I heard him in the street. When did this come? Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you it came in the post just after you left. Was it from? Oh, no, Dad. Uh, Addressed to you. Thanks. Oh, it's, it's from your Aunt Ethel. She says your Uncle George is badly and that they'll not be coming. You don't remember your Uncle George, do you? Well, I can remember going there when I was about ten. I remember a garden with a stream in it. <laughs> Fancy remembering that. It was when they used to live up on their farm up near Middlesbrough. Well, I remember a few cows and things. We were only up there for a couple of hours. Couldn't see you remembering that stream. I can remember falling in it and all. Did he? Oh, he's right about that. He, he fell in it all right. I'll never forget his mother's face. I'll go. thinks it's our David. But David wouldn't knock. No, I know. He's got his mind set on him in coming and can't seem to think of anything else. Oh, that sounds like your gran, I'll go. Val, thanks for all this. You don't have to thank me. Who's it from? I don't know, lad. I, I didn't look. It's from our David. This is difficult. Well, you should have taken it off like I told you. I know very well what I should have done without you keeping on at me. Here, let me have a go. Not on your life, Will, nor what your handwriting's like. Nobody'd be able to read it. Well, is anybody going to take the trouble? It just shows what you know about funerals. Oh, that's not a subject I'm anxious to be well up on. No, well, it's everybody's duty to be well up on funerals. Here, you're a funny woman. So I'm a funny woman, I'm not. Well, now I know what you think about me, don't I? No, you don't. You don't know at all. I don't know what I should do without you, Annie, and that's a fact. My Jack. Nay, nay, I was just thinking... Well, that you mustn't might... think anything of the kind, love. Such nonsense. 
Oh, well, you better go and get yourself ready, otherwise you'll have Conceptor waiting. Mm -hmm. Now, are you sure that you and Nona can manage on your own? It's probably her now. Oh, well, it's nearly opening time. I'll just let her in and then I'll leave the door open. Don't forget to take that wreath round from the regulars, love. Yeah, will you stop napping and get yourself off? Hello. Mm -hmm. Somebody with us for dark, isn't it, Mr. Lowe? Right, Here, let me take your coat through, will you? I'm just going down into the cellar to put another barrel on in case we need it. Well, so I don't suppose we shall be very busy this morning. I'll stop here just in case, shall I? Anything I can be getting on with? Well, I shan't be a minute if you don't mind twiddling your thumbs for a bit. By the way, if you should need anything, just knock on the floor, will you? I'll be right underneath that trap door there. Nice bit of flooring you got down there, darling. Yeah, isn't it? I was just admiring it myself. Oh, I've got a feeling I've seen you before. Did you come from round here, then? Do you mind? Yeah, I know what you mean. Out of a place, isn't it? Me, I'll come from a right town, I do. Oh, and where might that be? Well, Liverpool, of course. Do you mean you can't tell? I mean, from the accent, you know. Oh, it all sounds the same to me. Anyway, what you having? I'm new to this and I want to get some practice in on these. Oh, well, I was going to ask for a double whiskey, but you make it half a mile. We're very obliging up here, you know. So I've noticed. You want a machine in here, you know, to brighten this dump up? A music machine, darling, you know, something you have to do, you know what I mean? There's a funeral in the street. Darling, the only funeral that bothers me is my own, so don't go shushing me. I went back home once, and finally buried my mother a month before, only nobody had bothered to sell me. So I'm dead easy on funerals. How do you do? How do you do? Oh, I'm looking for Dennis Tanner. Can you tell me where I might, might, might find him? I've been to his house. Well, try number nine down the street, that's his sister's. Is that a fact? Right. I'll do that. Thanks, Pop. Yeah, what's all that in aid of? Ain't bad, is he? He is what? Stop raining. Where's your dad? Uh, I think he's in the front room. He's probably looking for our David. Tanny had something to eat. I don't think you feel much like him. He ought to have something. No, I wouldn't trouble him if I were you. People will be coming soon, and then he won't get the chance. What about you? Life has to go on, you know. Does it? You know it does. I feel cold. Well, there you are, then. That's because you haven't eaten. I've got something ready in the oven. It'll not take a minute. Is that quite right? Yes, I put it right myself this morning. Mr. Barlow, it's time you had something to eat. Oh, it's all right. Not, not just now, thank you. I've got to take the death certificate down to the insurance. No, I can do that. I'd rather do it myself, Chandler. Only took five minutes. Oh, well, there's that one for the Imperial Benefit Fund. Do you reckon we could post it? I don't see why not. Aye, all right then. What time did you say that London train got in? 11.30. Aye. I'll be off then now. Ken? Here you are. When did you make this? This morning when you were out. I'll go and get you the salt. Got him off, who? Mm. As a matter of fact, I didn't know there was anything in it. Well, you do now. Shh. How are you keeping them? No better for seeing you. I suppose you're after our Dennis. 
Well, I might be, and then again I might not. And what's that supposed to mean, may I ask? You've lost a bit of weight since I saw you last. Well, of course I've your daft thing. It's in there. Well, fancy that. I'll have to tell my girlfriend about that. She's dead worried about putting weight on. Oh, pardon me while I laugh. What's it feel like to be back in circulation, then? Circulation? Are you kidding? The only circulating I do is from the pram to the wash tub and back to the pram again. Oh, what a shame. A nice-looking girl like you and all. Oh, do you mind? No, I mean it. Hey, what's your husband doing himself these days? He works. It's more than you seem to do. Oh, it's very tired in work. Saps the vitality, you know. Hey, I've got an idea. How about you and me coming out in the town one night? Get back somebody on sparkle, you know. I'll ask my husband. Yeah, tell him I sent you. Oh, he will be pleased, I'm sure. Hey, how's Yogi Bear keeping, then? Yogi Bear? Yeah, you know, your Dennis, the policeman's friend. Look, if you've got any ideas about getting your own back on our Dennis... Oh, darling, you've got me all wrong. It was a very smart move of his introducing me to that copper. No hard feelings, no harm done. Anyway, I'm a reformed character now, you know. Well, he's not in. Oh, all right, all right. Just tell him I call, will you? Jed Stone, the housewife's choice. Hey. Don't forget the invitation. See ya. How's Gran? She's asleep. Oh, good. She looked worn out this morning. Has Esther come yet? I haven't seen her yet. Well, the cars will be here in a minute. Look, if she doesn't come soon, you better stop. I think you'd be better off here, anyway. I want to come with you. Oh, I wish our David had come. Dad's taking it badly. Where is he, Dad? He's in the front room, talking to Aunt Marjorie. Okay. I'm sorry I'm late. Where is she? She's asleep. Are you sure you don't mind looking after Gran, Esther? No, of course I don't. It's the least I could do. Well, I've put her pills on the dressing table. They're in a little box. Oh, David's not coming, is he? There'll be a good reason, Dad. I don't see what reason there could be. Well, we'd better go now. Go on, Dad. See young David. I don't think David's come. Ah, it is that. Did you go then? Me? Nay, no, I'm not one for funerals. Mrs. Walker went though. Poor out Frankie. Mm. There were some lovely flowers. Weren't the flowers lovely, Conceptor? They were really beautiful. Where have you been, Nina? Well, if you must know, I've just been round to thank Barlow to see if there's a second day. Oh, I do feel sorry for Frank Barlow. Uh, there's not been much joy in that house tonight. It's very sad. Very sad indeed. What I'd like to know is what happened to my flowers. Are you sure they were delivered, Nina? Of course they were delivered. I told you I took them round with my own answer, Frank Barlow. I gave them to that Valerie Albert Taplock's niece, as she calls herself. Did you ask her about them? Yes, I did. She said they might have gone round to the hospital, whatever that might mean. Oh, well, then, in that case, I don't suppose you mind, do you? Well, there's a time and place for all things, and I think the time for that was after the funeral. 
And I wish to pay my respects. So I'd like to pay them without interference. I don't think Frank Barlow would have allowed it. No, but I know very well who did, and it wasn't one of the family, but I'll have a bit more to say on that subject in due course. I wouldn't create a bother, Ina. I shall create no bother. I shall simply put the matter straight. Persons in, in my position can't do very much, but they might let you do what little you can in peace. And I speak as a non-relative. There were some people even nearer than me that couldn't even go to the graveside. What is this about David Barlow not turning up? Less said about that, the better, if you ask me. Oh, come off it, Annie. If David Barlow couldn't get up to his mother's funeral, there'd be a very good reason. Huh, football, I suppose. I'm surprised at you, Annie Walker. You know David as well as I do. It took a sight more than football to keep him away. Well, I felt very sorry for poor Frank Barlow. Well, just as long as people don't jump to too many conclusions all of a sudden, that's all. There's a bit too much of that round here as it is. What do you mean, Annie? I mean about this accident. Well, it's no good looking at me like that, love. I'm going to have me say and then I'm going to shut up. There's been one or two things said in this bar that would have been better left unsaid. What are you driving at, Harry? The chappie that was driving that bus that knocked Ida Barlow down was a, happened to be a very good friend of mine. He's a decent chap with a wife and family and this is at him harder than most. No, no, it's a shocking thing, shocking. But from what I've heard, you can take it from me, it was no more Jim Foster's fault than it was yours or mine. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Jack. Just got a bit fed up about hearing people talking about murdering bus drivers the last few days. A bit more to it than that. Guess me, that sort of thing doesn't do anybody any good. Uh, Mr. Swindley and Miss Nugent come to see you about Grant. Oh, please don't bother to get up, Mr. Barlow. We, we only called about the arrangements for Mrs. Leathers. Miss Nugent. The committee have asked me to say that we'd be glad to arrange for someone to sit in with Mrs. Leathers and look after a midday meal. Very kind of you. Very kind indeed. We're only too glad to be of service, Mr. Barlow. Only too glad. I hope she'll soon be well enough to do without us. Oh, I'm sure she'll be on her feet again in a day or two. Oh, yes, I'm sure she will. Quite sure. But uh, if there's any other little service that we can perform, please don't hesitate to call on us. Very kind of you indeed. Not at all, Mr. Barlow. Not at all. Well, Miss Newton, thank you. You'll pardon this intrusion, Kenneth, but I thought it might help to set your father's mind at rest. Even the simplest problems can assume mountainous proportions at times like this. Good night, Mr. Barlow. Very kind indeed. Good night, Mr. Barlow. Good night. Oh, can, can I go first? Oh, uh, uh, yes, come in. Oh, Frank, uh, it's your David. He's on the phone down the Rovers. David? Aye. Right. Well, I'll get down there and tell him to hang on, shall I? All right, thanks. OK. Oh, come on, Dad. I'm not coming, lad. But it's you we want to talk to. I'm sorry, I've got nought to say to him. Nought at all. Now, let me see. Oh, no, that don't, don't tell only... me, love, don't tell me. No, just put the change in my hand while I'm not looking. What the eye doesn't see, the aunt doesn't grieve over. Uh, are these two causing any trouble, love? No, I think they're a couple of ducks, really. Well, I hear that, then, with a couple of ducks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> That's as may be, but they're not, they're not the only ones, you know, be a long yeah. chalk. There's a chap who used to come in here. Here's young Kenneth now, I'll let him through. Come on, this way, Kenneth. Thanks, Mr. Robin. You know where the phone is, don't uh, you? Know? Yes. Hello? Hello, Keith. No, he's uh, back at home. Well, uh, you know how it is. You what? Could you speak up a bit, Keith? You were where? Where? Well, where are you now? Hey, hang on, let me, let me just think about this for a minute. Uh, look, kid, you're about five minutes away, aren't you? Right, well, you hang on there, and I'll come round and we'll talk it over, OK? And, kid, don't worry. How about some service round here, then? Oh, you've got oh, a cheek, Dennis Tanner. I've got two, one here and one here. What are you going to have? I'll have a bind of orange juice. Oh, you might not believe it, but I've got hers on my chest. Oh, shut up. You make me go peculiar. I'll have a light ale if it's not too much trouble. Miss? Here. There's a bloke over there wants to see you. Been hanging around all day. Oh, heck. What's the matter? Think he's going to bite you? He does look the biting tired, doesn't he? Aren't you going to see him? He's been waiting ever such a long time. Yeah, I am. Hey! How about some money? Oh, uh, yeah, I can keep the change. Thanks. A penny does come in useful sometimes. How you been keeping, then? Packets. I've been expecting you to pop round any time. What, after the fancy little move you made last time? Are you yeah. kidding? 
Oh, it's very classy, was that? Very classy indeed. <laughs> yeah, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. An old mate of yours and all. Hey, I'll tell you what I came around to see you about. Are you still working at this club life? Well, I am and I'm not, if you know what I mean. I'm not a flaming mind reader, you know. Well, it's like this, you see. I'm still there, but it's just a sideline now. As a matter of fact, I found myself a nice little job as a talent scout. Oh, I've got an eye for a bit of talent myself. Yeah, but this is professional, see. But you're still at the club? Well, I'm still there, just for the time being. Right. Well, uh, I'm after a job. Eh? I said I'm after a job. You know, work, graft, the hard way. Well, not so hard, you know, but on the level. You know what I mean? Like, on the level. You're having me on. Well, stole me. That's a nice thing to say, isn't it? Well, I ask you. I'm not standing here to be insulted, you know. Here, yeah, hang on a minute. You must have been it's a bit sudden, like, innit? What sort of job are you after? Well, what have you got? Oh, dead easy, me, you know. Well, I've got to be, haven't I? I'll leave it to you, mate. You just do your best for an old pal, eh? Well, I should tongue ganging now. It's all right. I'll be back in a minute. What's up with you, anyway? Oh, nothing. Well, cheer up, for heaven's sake. You're among friends. Hey, I never asked you. How did you like Birmingham? Well, I didn't get much chance to find out, did I? We'd only got settled in when my dad said we were coming back. And here I am, like a bad penny. Oh, is mm. There is something wrong with you. I don't know how to tell you. Well, well, we should try. I'm not sitting with the wet lettuce all night. It's his guitar. Whose guitar? Dennis Tanner's. What about it? Chris, I dropped it. I was just fooling around with it when you were out. And it just slipped right out of me and suddenly it's busting it. I don't know what, I just put it back in its case. Well, here he is. So what? I told you, I bust his guitar. You've done us all a good favour, believe me. Hello, Christine, Hello, Jean. Uh, got some good news for you. Oh, hi. Well, tell us we could do with a bit of good news. I'm pouring up a notice inside Floyd Linley's shop window for sale. One guitar. Well, there's no need to pretend. I knew it to please you. Hi, Ivan, when you're ready. Dad? Well? What's he got to say for himself? Taking him long enough about it. He's here, Dad. What? He's been here all the time. He came as we were at the graveside, but, well, he couldn't take it, not with all the rest of them there. Well, what's he been doing all this time? Walking and worrying about what you'd say. Is he coming? Yes. Now we're alone, he is, Dad. He's outside. Oh. But, Dad, he can't stand much more. It's all right, lad. He won't have to stand out for me. I knew he'd come. I always knew he would. Ah, we all did. Oh, Ken, lad, thanks for doing what you have done these last few days. It's a good job one of us can stand up to it. Sure. I can stand up to it. residents and the family mourned for Ida. But the community soon bounced back when they all had something more cheerful to look forward to. Harry and Conceptor had named the day.